Welcome back to the Total Focus Podcast. I'm your host, Paul. Our special guest this week is Des. She is a professional blast cheerleader, and she is one of these people that completely will be motivating you to get up and dance. She pursued dance her entire life. As a young adult, she did cheerleading and dance, and then in high school, she did cheerleading and dance in collegiate college she did cheerleading and now as a professional cheerleader with the blast she has all these great stories along with that she's also pursuing pageantry and her masters and she is serving our military in an active role so this is someone that is completely motivating and just someone to look up to and i hope you guys stay tuned and welcome to the show does hi well i i was really excited to have one of my cheerleading colleagues on the show and really um, someone that I really look up to because the first time I actually had the opportunity for to, to meet you um, and to the person that I know now, um, you've completely like really motivated um, and dedicated yourself to being the best cheerleader possible. And it was really impressed uh, on me how, how dedicated you are. So I would love to really let everyone hear your story and, and see, um, let everyone know that, you know, you don't have to um, be doing cheerleading your entire life to, to really have an opportunity to, to, um, to be on a, a big team. So. Yeah, I was a hot mess. The first, <laughs> the first <girl. laughs> but you know, the thing is that it's, it, to me, it, it sounds I I saw it as someone that really was working hard, you know, and uh, you could I could see your dedication to to wanting to be the best, um, and it looks to me that you definitely have to achieve that you're 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 definitely one of the leaders in the group. So, and that's what it comes off um, on at least with the blast Instagram is that you're definitely one of the leaders in the group. So, yeah. Um... Well, I just guess going back to like how I started with everything. So um, I've always been a cheerleader. Like I started doing cheerleading when I was about about five years old. I started off as a little mascot, and then I worked my way up um, through high school. I did. I was my high school team, um, and then I went on to be a collegiate cheerleader. So it was very based like cheerleading competition, um, very spirit like things. Now that nature that that level of cheerleader. Um, is is that completely different to what you're doing as a professional yes. cheerleader? Yes, it's completely different. So um, when I first got into the, the world of professional cheer or professional dance, um, I had like a, a rude awakening because I thought, oh, I can do this. I've been doing this all my life. I, I also danced as well, but I did more of like hip hop dance. I didn't do like the ballet and jazz as much as I did hip hop. So when I first tried out um, floor floor routine, basically like on, yeah, yeah, like sliding knees, dancing legs up, you know, spins, turns. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Completely different, completely mm-hmm. different from regular cheer. <laughs> we don't do any of that in cheer. Well, you know, your skills would probably be extremely well uh, appropriated and probably well um, respected if you did NBA uh, cheerleading too, because their floor routines are, very close aligned to hip hop. Right. And now a lot of the NBA teams are starting to have more like a double team. Like they have mm-hmm. like more collegiate type cheerleaders as well, which is new to me at least. Mm-hmm. So that's well, something is. that's like, Oh wow. If I can, if I can't make it somewhere else, I can definitely go try out with the collegiate cheer team. I know how to stunt and do all those things. So it's really nice that they're opening up the realm of different aspects to cheer because people say, Oh, you're professor cheerleaders, but, we don't always do cheer. We we more so dance, and that's just what it is across the board. So I actually like that they're expanding that mm-hmm. um, into the professional dance world as well. So when you were a young child, is that something that you um, were like you asked your mom or dad to to sign you up, or they signed you up and you just happened to fall in love with it? Um, so actually, my mom was a cheerleading coach for a junior high school. So that's when I started the mascot thing. So I kind of didn't have a choice. It was kind of like, 
I was in the little skirt. I was, you know, I was a little, little mascot. And then in elementary school, all of my friends were doing, it's called the Atlantic City Dolphins. All my friends were doing the Dolphins. And I was like, I want to do the Dolphins. My friends are doing it. So I signed up. Uh, well, I begged my mom to sign me up. And she was like, sure. And then from there, kind of just, I did it every year until high school, basically. Like, because it's a city league, like how Pop Warner has city leagues mm -hmm. and things. So I basically did it until I was old enough to go into high school to become a high school cheerleader. And it just progressed from there. Now, did you did you also do cheerleading in high school? Yes, I did cheerleading in high school, and um, I did dance in high school as well. But okay. I did cheer all um, four years of high school. I ended my career at Atlantic City High School. Um, I was a senior captain. And well, congratulations! That's a big to be to be the captain of the squad your senior year is a big. That's a big because it's not only the you know, being captain, but that means that your, your colleagues, you know, respect you because they have to listen to you. So that's a big role. So. Yeah, it was, it was really, um, like a, like a first pride of like getting your leadership skills. And it was four of us. Um, and our team was pretty big. So it was kind of like, we all had our different personalities and aspects to leadership. And we had watched our previous senior captains and it was just, it was such a great experience to have. Um, I still have my little jacket, my cheer jacket from high school that has captain on it because it was such a, a great experience for me. Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I have my senior varsity jacket, too. I would encourage you never to throw that away. Of course not. <laughs> so, um, uh, this will be my 20th uh, year uh, school year reunion for high school. So, yeah. If, if, wow. if possible, yeah. So, if possible, try to keep that nice and fresh so you can like show that off you know so yeah um so you're you're coming out of high school as captain so are you doing hip-hop dance in high school or is that in college that you transitioned to do because you said you did dance in high school as well yeah so in um in high school i did more so like hip-hop dance um we did dances for the talent show um Things like that. And I also did like majorette dance for like a little a little while, like maybe one to two years um, for the city. And then I just continued on doing dance and cheer into college. Okay. I just I couldn't give up one or the other and I wanted to do both. So like dance was more recreational and like I was a part of a club when I was in college. And I was on a dance club and we did mainly like hip hop and majorette style dance. We didn't do a lot of like jazz. Right. And ballet dance. That's just. And why give what, it up? And why give it up if you can fit it in your schedule and you enjoy it? So. Right. Are. Do you find that. Having your mom put you in cheerleading that early, influenced you positively going to high school, and then it automatically was an easy flow into high to the college, and then to where you are now. Like, do you think that you would be dancing professionally? if you weren't on that projective younger? Um, no, I don't think so. I, I think I probably would have taken up maybe a different a different sport. Like, I did run track as well in high school, so I probably would have stayed with track, but I wanted to do cheer more. Like, I love the glam and all that of cheer. Um, so I definitely think that that first initial step with, like, uh, enforcing me and, like, putting cheer on me definitely helped me get to where I was. And then it was... When I got to college, my first university, um, I actually didn't make the cheer team the first, like the summer season going into college. I didn't make the team. So that kind of made me want to do it even more because I just felt like I've been doing this all my life. How can I not make the team? And it was just everything has politics to it. So I didn't make it the first time. And that just pushed me even harder to want to get on the collegiate team. And I feel like once I got on the collegiate team, um, when I actually transferred schools to Chowan University, I was just so, I was surrounded by such a good space and I was pushed, like, every season I was on the team, I was pushed to be a better person and a better cheerleader. So, but it some, definitely it definitely helped. No, and, and um, sometimes you do have to um, take a step back to move two steps forward. You know, they, they say as a child that you need to 
you need to fall a million times to learn how to walk. So, you know, you know that that totally makes sense from a um, basic philosophy from just learning. So, it sounds like the way you were describing, you sound more driven the second time you were trying out for your collegiate team. Yeah, for sure. Because I was like, there's no way that I can't be on this team. Like, or no way that I can go my, go my whole college career and not be a cheerleader. Like, that was just the one thing that I was looking forward to going to college was being a cheerleader. So that they just made me want to do it 10 times, 10 times more. So it, looking at just the, that young, um, young lady trying out for high school and collegiate, do you have any recommendations or, or, or um, tips for that person that's, you know, maybe they didn't have that supportive mom to do um, young, but they want to they wanna try and make the team for high school. Do you have any recommendations that they should um, try to focus on? Um, I would say, and it's probably going to sound pretty cliche, but it is actually true. Like just but good- if you want to do something, you really just have to go for it regardless of, um, who supports it or who believes in you because you have to believe in yourself first. If you don't believe in yourself, you're just never going to make it. Um, and that's something that I had to learn and I still learn day to day because it's something like you may believe in yourself with like going in there, but once you get in that room and you go to audition or you go to try out or you really have a burning desire to do something, you have to constantly believe in yourself. It's not like a, oh, I believe that I can do it and then that's it. Um, and just work hard at it. It's not something that comes easy to everyone. Um, but even still, you want to feel like you're the best one in the room, but you also just have to still remember that there are great people in the room with you. And in order for you to get to where you want to be, or you have to fight for it, you have to work hard for it, and you have to believe that that spot is yours. And that's what I would say, especially when, with um, collegiate cheer, because there's so many so there's now, you know, males have always been in the picture, but now there's even more males coming into it. And this is great, but it's like you have to just be able to stand out on your own, but also blend it with the team. So it's a lot of hard work. You know, I, I don't think that, you know, that is uh, just normal advice. I mean, I think good advice is good advice. So it doesn't matter if if it's something that someone's heard. Maybe the, the one time that you've said it to our listeners, they will it will finally it will peak in their brain. So I wouldn't necessarily take that, you know, just because it's something that you've heard a million times, maybe someone needs to hear it a million one to, to really be inspired. So do you, do you feel that you definitely should uh, pursue cheer, cheering at either high school or uh, collegiate before you really try and pursue cheerleading as a professional? Like, do you need that um, experience? Or? So I, I think it can go either way. So there, there are plenty of girls who have never done any type of cheer or dance before and they become professional cheerleaders. And then there's some who have dance experience only. And then there's some like me who only had cheer experience only and they still make professional teams. Um, for me, I would say that it's good to have some type of experience to get exposure so, like, for me, being on being in a team environment was something that I grew to love because I was always a part of a team. Um, and being able to be highly spirited with your fans and being confident in your movements and things, I just feel like any experience is good experience. So whether it's, like, re- recreational or high school collegiate, but if you don't have that experience, it's not – I don't think you should be discouraged from trying out because there there's all types of experiences that make the team. But for me, I would definitely say – being a part of a team environment, understanding the sisterhood, understanding the hard work that all my teammates are putting in around me just definitely makes the experience that much more um, understandable. And it just makes it more tolerable as well because you have so much going on that you have to also remember, like, these are your family and this is your team. And if you're a team and you're a family all the time, like, your experience would be 100 times greater. So it gets either way. Okay. Do you... uh how do you feel with the 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 team aspect um is it more like a sport where um you can rely on everyone in the group or is there a lot of individual um groups inside the team like are there um are there 
because maybe that you have a tumbling group and then you have a dance group. Is it, are they subdivided or is it the group is usually a very um, cohesive group together and you can rely on everybody? Uh, with my experience, it's more so um, cohesiveness because, like, there, of course, there's always individuality, meaning every person has to hold their self accountable, but we also have to hold each other accountable as well. So it's kind of like you want to be the teammate that is the good teammate in the sense. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone needs to do their part in order to be a part of the team. So regardless of what your your tricks or your skill level is, you still have to bring whatever you bring to the team is what you have to constantly bring to the team in order to make it cohesive, in order to make it work. Like there's amazing teams that some girls are, are really good at, you know, like the um air like um gymnastics type things, and some girls are really good at dance. But those elements have to be able to be together in order for it to be like a cohesive, comprehensive team. Um, so it's more so like just the whole team basis, but each of course everyone has to work on their own individually and then we work together on it as a group. Is the the way that everyone works together, is it like a sorority where it's everyone is very reliable um, on or is it more like you have your your own requirements and you, you guys in baseball, it's kind of an individual sport where you, you need to hit the ball and then the person behind you needs to hit the ball. But then the person on the base needs to run their bases. But you know, when you play defense, everyone has to work together. So how would you describe that team aspect from, from the, is it more like a a sorority where everyone's got everyone's back and it's very chummy chummy, or is it more like everyone has their individual roles, but they're also, you know, they work together very well too. Um, I would say it's both. And that's, that's the wonderful thing about, like dance and cheer all together because like individually you have to be able to to meet the requirement or meet the expectation like you have to like if you know that you're struggling with one area you have to be able to meet the team where they are you can't just like falter because you're just not good at it like that's just not how it works um so and that aspect you have to be in like kind of like baseball like baseball you have to be good at your position or whatever you're at at the moment Mm -hmm. you have to be good at it So that's like that with baseball, but it's also like basketball where every person um, changes the game. So if like if everyone's playing well and everyone's doing good, we're we're all we're all doing well. So it is really is it really is both of them put together. Like um, and actually being in a sorority kind of helps out with that. Like you have all all these sisters who are all different and who all have to meet the same level of expectation in their own way. But when it comes together, it's like a beautiful masterpiece. And it's like, it's a great thing. And that's one thing where I feel a lot of sports don't see or don't give us credit for because like we do, we're doing a lot of moving parts, but we make it look so good as one. Mm -hmm. And that's, and that's really the aspect of dance and cheer all together. Well, sometimes when you're so good, people can't, can't understand that like it takes a lot of effort to to look perfect, to look flawless. They don't, yeah. it doesn't, it's weird about how the human mind works that like we can't, we can't understand that it's not that simple. You know, it takes, you know, it takes a lot of practice to look flawless. So, um, right. <laughs> um, I, I, w- I, I wish the brain would, would be, um, would work better that way, but it just doesn't. Um, so you would definitely say that uh, cheerleading, I guess, would you say even in high school and um, in college and in the professional level is more like a sorority, that it's like an exclusive club? I I, I, I get that feeling as, as a male for the professional side because you guys get like special rings depending on the team you have and you guys have parties that that – only people that are on the team are invited to. So, I mean, that's the, that's the vibe I get. I mean, it's, it'll be sorority like in the way that we, yes, we are all sisters and we're a family, 
but um, it's also something that you we work hard for. Like it's you know we work hard to get there. We work hard to be a part of a group. It's just like any other team sport, though. Like mm-hmm. you try out, you make it, and then you have a job to do. And sometimes that yeah, comes with perks, and sometimes it may may not. Um, but so you would prefer like, you would prefer to call it a a a, 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 a um, team sport then than than a than a competition or or um or a dance uh I forget what the other way they call it but you would rather call it a team sport then most definitely it's a team sport we are athletes too like we have to be in athletic good shape we have to be able to um meet standards and expectations of the sport we have to we do if sometimes I feel like we may work harder than some some of the people that are like on the um, on the field like we do a lot of work and we put in a lot of hard time a lot of um effort we put in a lot of hours of work and practices and then we still have to make it all look glamorous at the same time so i it's definitely a sport it's a different type of sport of course it's not like a you know com like you know contact sport but in a sense like we do all the hard work that other athletes do as well well i i'm not going to argue it it, it, in my opinion, it's definitely a sport, and I, I w- we don't even have to argue that women work harder than men when it comes to some of the stuff. I mean, some of the guys that play male only sports literally don't even lift weights, and they think that they can get by, and they just happen to be really um, lucky with genetics. So, um, you guys definitely, you know, um, oh, you guys bust your ass so it's just it's just a fact again it's one of those things where i don't think that we can comprehend how much stress we put on women but we don't put it on men at all i mean you you mentioned the makeup thing that's a whole thing that is not even a comp i mean as a man we i don't have to worry about that in fact i can grow my beard out and i can look like a hobo and still be okay (laughs) and it would be probably criticized on your end if you did that so um i just wanted to take one second from this great interview and talk about our sponsor of the week mid-atlantic video and photography productions no matter if you're planning a wedding a special event or you just need an amazing headshot they are the team to get the job done you can reach out to them at 443-422 Three eight three zero again. That's four four three four two two three eight three zero. Or you can go just go right to their website at mavpp.com. Now let's get right back to the show and listen to this great interview. First year in collegiate, you didn't make the team. Second year, you change colleges and you make the team. Now, do you spend the next three years at that college, or do you change, or how how did your collegiate career wind up going? Okay, um, so how like collegiate goes? Of course, there's like football season and basketball season. Yes, so of I didn't make it. I didn't make it for the football season, but I um, transferred schools at the end of like football season, so at the end of the fall semester, and then going into the spring semester, I tried out for cheer at my new school, and then I made it, which was then basketball season. Okay. So technically, I did uh, what, three, three and a half years of basketball, and um, three, just three of football. Um, but yeah, I stayed at my school. Um, I stayed at my school for my tenured of college okay. and I was a collegiate cheerleader there and um, we were lucky enough to be in the CIAA um, so every year they do the CIAA basketball tournament um, in Charlotte, North Carolina that's cool And um, I was blessed to be able to go um, to be on the CIAA squad because there's a different squad like everyone doesn't get to go all the time gotcha. and um, I was able to go two years out of my tenure being on the team. So that was really special to me because being able to just go and represent your school on kind of like one of the biggest platforms for our school in basketball season. So that was just really, um, really great to just experience and to, to dance on like a, 
you know, a big, the dance in a big arena is actually the, uh, now the Charlotte, Charlotte Hornets arena. So like we dance in that arena around, you know, all these like big, like big spaces. So it's just a, a pretty amazing experience that I was really blessed to have. And had I not made, had me not making that team and then being able to transfer is kind of what made that happen for me. So I'm really blessed for that. Well, there's a couple of good things you can think of it. One, um, you found a school that accepted you and um, welcomed you. And it sounds like they found you to be the expertise and to be um, someone that everyone should look up to. So that's really awesome that you found you found a home with a team that really respected you because, you know, you could have been, you could have gone somewhere and made the team, but they would have, you could have gone somewhere where they never got you an opportunity. And it sounds like you went, you found a, you found a school that gave you opportunity and you're able to excel and you're able to do both uh, football and basketball. So, I mean, that's not, not, not many people um, have the opportunity just, you know, based on schedules to do both. So it sounds like you really um, took advantage of your full college career to, to, to really practice your art. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah. I mean, being, getting into school wasn't necessarily an issue. Um, I was always an honor student, so I always had really good grades. That was one thing I definitely um, look forward to, or definitely one thing I worked hard for, like my mom didn't accept any C's in the house. So everything had to be A's and B's. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, no, it, it actually set me up for like success, like graduating exactly. college as um magna cum laude. So that was just very, well, like, that that's was, awesome. That was Congratulations on that. Yeah, thanks. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, so yeah, you should know. You, I heard you be like, <laughs> act like modest. <laughs> <laughs> No, that's a big thing. Yeah, no, most most people don't even even sniff that. So that's a big deal. Yeah, I I thank my mom for that because she was very, very, very hard on me with the academics, and it was like if I wasn't good academically, it was no way I could do cheer. So I kind of had to be a good student. So, well, the I didn't mean that that education was. I was meaning that the team accepting you and being happy because you could go to harvard and maybe the school maybe the the dance team was just not the best fit for you so it, i'm th- i'm thankful that you you found a team that was open to your style and they liked the way you dance and they were they thought that you were excelling that's what is what how i meant it so oh yeah they they definitely i don't know my coach definitely saw something in me to i mean she of course she had judges there too but at, like the coach makes the final decision of course so I was just happy that she saw something in me to give me a chance, you know, mm-hmm. to be the team. So in collegiate, you had the opportunity, like you mentioned, to, to do football and indoor arena uh, sports. So do you have one now out of college that you want to pursue? I I know you've done a couple arena cheerleading professional teams, but – is that what you like? Do you like arena cheerleading, or do you think that there's an opportunity to do outdoor cheerleading? Um, so my my goal and my first love has always been NFL. So okay. I definitely I love football. So my favorite my favorite time of the year is football season. So like when football season was around, I was that was the best cheerleader in the world. Um, so I I love I just love football um so of course the ultimate goal and the highest the highest rank you can go is to be an nfl mm-hmm. um cheerleader uh, in, in, or nba but for me it's to be an nfl cheerleader because that has been my number sure. one dream for such a long time have you considered um looking at the auditions for the xfl because there's a washington team that will be starting in a couple months not even know what that is so i will look into that for sure so the gentleman that owns the wrestling organization called wwe Mm -hmm. um is starting a a football team organization called the xfl um and they have a team in washington but they also have a team in new york 
Dallas, Los Angeles, Seattle, and I believe Vegas. So um, I think if you want to do sideline dancing, you want to be on a football field, you know, I would encourage you to, to look at that as well. So is do you are you are you finding a lot of success doing um arena dancing currently? Because I've definitely just, you know, having the opportunity to work with you in the last couple of years, I've seen someone really grow and become so much more strong and confident uh, with them themselves. Do you see that in yourself? Um, for sure. I definitely think the past, I've been going after this for quite some time now, since I lived here two and a half years. So in the past two and a half years, it's been definitely a lot of growth. And I think, as I said before, any experience is good experience. So all, all the experiences I have, have had so far has been pretty amazing with just adding different elements to my performance skills or different elements to my technical skills. Um, and no matter where you are, whether you're on a arena whether you're on um like a basketball or if you're in arena as in football you're on turf or if you're in on a soccer field like i like i currently do now it doesn't matter where you are you have to learn how to just perform for the audience that's presented in front of you so i definitely think that all areas of the arena have definitely been very helpful with just being able to expand in all areas of my skills and um I've just been very grateful that I've had people who see things in me or maybe who just like take a shot with me and like it's really just giving me those opportunities because I wasn't and I was not a dancer, but I'm turning into one, you know, so it's like it's it's it's, a, it's an amazing experience once you get somebody who just believes in you just a little bit, you know? Yeah, I I mean, I think a mentor or some or just having multiple people believe in you is a huge, a huge um game changer when you have to always fight upstream is you it's it's a never winning battle but it sounds like you have a lot of people willing to to be in your corner as well as be someone willing to be your mentor so do you do you recommend um someone that is pursuing dance or to find a mentor or find someone to to be in their corner if they're going to to pursue dance professionally? Uh, Most definitely. I feel that uh, literally everything you do, um, you should find a mentor, whether it's um, trying to do computer science or whether it's like digital design or broadcasting or dance or soccer. Like you always need some type of mentor who can one, lead you in the right direction, two, who you can call on when you're not feeling like your best self and you maybe need some motivation and three, someone who, who believes in you and like, will always back you up, regardless of, how, you know, if you suck or not. So that person is there to tell you that you're great and that you're amazing. And everyone, I would suggest everybody get a mentor. Well, it goes back to that philosophy, you know, if they're willing to be truly honest with you and be, you know, it only, it does, they're not, I don't, a good mentor is not purposely trying to bring you down. They're trying to build you up. Exactly. So sometimes they have to be hard, but sometimes they can also be gentle too. So, right. So you did a year with the the Shuckers, right? And then did you dance also with another um, semi pro basketball team? Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Um, I did one season with the Baltimore Shuckers, and that was, like, the jump start to, to my career. That's awesome. Um, literally, I give I give that organization and the director at that time, which was um, Ariana Matthews, I give her such – I will always give her a high praise because she didn't necessarily – she didn't have to, but she saw something in me, and she really worked with me that whole season to really just push me out of the envelope, like, like, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. And she's such a beautiful dancer. And it was just such an amazing opportunity to just be trained by her and just to take things from her. Um, so that was really, like, the jump start to my career. 
in the professional, the semi-professional slash professional world. And it really gave me the boost to like, I can do this. I can do this. Um, and then after that year, they didn't do the Shuckers dancers anymore. I so know. I, Disappointing. I turned. I know. So sad. Right. <laughs> so I turned and then I went to the DMV Lady Warriors. Um, and I, I was there for a season. And then. And how that, year, how that experience. Now, is that similar to the Shuckers? Is it, is it a semi-pro team, but it's just in a different league? Yes. So it's um it when I was on the team it was in the ABA basketball league, semi professional, but now it's in the TT, TTBL. Gotcha. Um that's a new semi professional league. Um that experience was great too. Um the director and the coach and my, even my captain, which I'm still really close to the captain and the assistant director, they were really amazing with um seeing each girl's flaws and talents and being able to push them in ways that maybe we weren't expecting or maybe we didn't realize. So with them, that's where I, I believe I really grew with like my tightness and um, just developing skills I didn't have um, or that I didn't develop throughout the Shuckers. Um, so that was really enlightening. And I have still have a really good relationship with a lot of the girls that are still either on the team or that have left the team. And I just think that is fairly amazing how, in the dance world, you find so many people who are just like you or so many people that are so eager to reach the dreams or reach the goals that you're also trying to reach. And then you do it together. And it's like you have a forever relationship with that person, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, ideally, do you have a couple of young ladies that you want to be on the next level and that you want to go with them? Is that, would that be like ideally, like be so awesome to, have that person come with you or, or of just, course. okay. Of course. I feel like, um, when you meet genuine people and you're on a team with that person, like they, they do generally become your sisters because not only are they going through the process with you, they're also working just as hard as you. They're also, you know, trying to make sure our fitness is correct. They're also going through programs with you. Um, I have a really close friend, like, she is really like my forever sister. Like we have done, we have done a team together. We've also done um, sideline prep together. We've done um, just workouts together. We've done the Redskins training program together this year. So we've definitely, we tried out for teams together last season. So we definitely have just made steps within our progress. And it's so much easier when you have a person that one is honest with you and that you can rely on to be trustworthy, to be there with you, helping you through the process as you help them through the process as well. I mean, it sounds like your attitude is really what made you make the team because it sounds like to me that if you gave the, you, you, if you showed your willingness and, and, and great attitude, the coach like you are during, during this conversation, your personality clearly won them over and I'm sure the the dance just put it over the top. So, I mean, that's the way it sounds like to me. Cause it sounds like to me, you come off as very like, you know, I can do this. Just give me an opportunity, you know, um, you know, and I think that's, it sounds like to me, it's like a positive. Do you think that that's what it is, is that you just have that positive attitude that make people want to be a part, be on and around you then? Um, I, I do because that really is my attitude. Like I know I can do it. Just please give me an opportunity. And unfortunately, um, you know, when you're trying out for bigger professional teams, they don't always get to see that that some of personality unless you make it past a certain rounds where they can actually sit and talk with you and be on a one on one interview with you. Um, so like that's a struggle with trying to make sure that my personality is also shining through my performance, which is a goal for myself this year. Um, but that's definitely who I am. And it's definitely just like how I've, how I've become. And I'm just so grateful for the opportunities that I've had before where I am now, like before I got on the Baltimore blast, I'm so grateful that I had experiences to where someone believed in me and gave me just a little bit of confidence. And someone saw my growth and they, they congratulated me with telling me how much I've grown, and how much I can actually do. So like, that is just literally my approach to, the professional world like one day i will make it on some team and i will fulfill my dream but while i'm here i'm also going to be grateful for the small achievements or the, the major achievements in a way that i've made for myself so 
Well, um, I think being on the blast is a huge achievement. Um, most people in this area consider the blast to be the top semi-pro team to be to dance for. So, for for the team to recognize you and to put you on the team and for you to excel, I think you should be very, um, you know, thankful and also like, you know, like you can do this. So I, you know, I encourage you to, to continue working hard. I mean, do you feel that? Do you, do you, do you, do you feel that you understand that you're on one of the top teams in the area? Um, yeah. So as the Baltimore blast, because, um, it is major arena soccer, um, it is professional. So technically we are professional cheerleaders and that kind of is a big step because so many people, even me trying out. So when I tried out, I just came off of getting my wisdom teeth extracted. So it was wow. such a, it's, it was such a crazy moment for me. Like I had to really go in there and like push, push through. Um, so like even me go, trying out, like I had so much support and I really didn't realize how much support I had. I had so much support going into tryouts and so many people just in awe, like once I actually made the team and there's like, there are plenty of girls who want to be in our predicament or in our spot and we're just honored to even have been selected. So I, I do feel like um, this is a, a super big, huge achievement for me, especially like me being only two teams in and then I've made, you know, I've made it to that professional stance. And I never, like, I would say I never thought it would happen, but I didn't think it would happen, like. So quickly? Like, yes, because I <laughs> I really know that I had, so, I had so much to work on, but I pulled, I pulled through and I, like I was saying before, believing in myself. I believed in myself from the time I walked in there to the time I got in front of the judges to the time I had to literally try not to, breathe too hard so that way my wisdom teeth wouldn't the stitches wouldn't bleed like I just believed in myself and I told myself that this was my year to be on this team and then I made it so it was just literally believing in myself it was it's actually ironic and kind of crazy well maybe uh maybe that um instill confidence that you had to have so that you wouldn't uh, tear out your um stitching maybe helped you so that you didn't over you didn't you didn't look like to the judges that you're um stressing too much maybe that was a maybe that was something that was a good thing you know so um whatever good karma that you had I, I would encourage you to to definitely have that going into any other auditions so yeah for sure I and I think it's also just like the difference of adrenaline you know like you know that going in there like okay I know that my teeth are messed up I know that my teeth are hurting but like once I started dancing, I didn't feel any of that until the end, of course. Mm -hmm. So it was just really like, if I could actually, not saying I want to get my, you know, have that type of pain all the time during auditions, but whatever I had in me during that time, I would love to have it back because <laughs> mm -hmm. I did great and it led to, you know, a, a good turnout. So for sure. So... You, you danced one year with the Shuckers, one year with um, the D.C. team. I'm sorry. What was the the, the name of? Oh, uh, the DMV Lady Warriors. DMV Lady Warriors. Awesome. And then the following year, you're doing the Blast, that which is what the year we're currently in, right? Yes. Awesome. So um, one of the things I don't know from uh, statistic-wise, but um, – a lot of your past colleagues um, make the big leap from this team. I don't know if you know, but there's like a 50% team. So um, I don't know if they use that as a pitch or just like a, a a selling tool, but like there's a lot of Redskins and Ravens alumni that are Blast alumni. So is that something that excites you that – that the team that sends other people to the next level likes you that much, or is it a pressure that you have to live up to all the past people that are past blast cheerleaders that are now on Ravens or Redskins? Um, I think for me, like, of course it excites me that this team has groomed so many beautiful dancers that they've made it to 
higher level dance teams. I think that's just an honor, honestly, to be able to say, oh, we all, we, we've come from the same place. We were under the same um, hardworking and dedicated director that to help us even get to where we need to be. Um, I think every year there's always a higher and higher standard, which is honestly motivating because you want to be the best that you can be when you hit the floor. You want to be the best you can be when you're out in public. Um, and getting opportunities that we would never have be if we weren't trained properly or we weren't a part of a team that was so big on the camaraderie and the professionalism that we have. So to me, it's really an honor to know that so many other beautiful women have come from the team and has made it somewhere else. And on other teams, not um, not just like Redskins and Ravens, but also like Houston and um I believe the Celtics and other places. So like they're, they're, they're expanding worldwide. So just to know that I have so many other, now that I'm a part of the blast sisterhood, I have so many other sisters that are all over the world is really kind of, is really exciting. It's like, an, it really is an honor. Um, in my opinion. Is there something because you've had the experience of working with three other directors on the national, on a, on this uh, professional level, is there something mm-hmm. different that, you see that the blast do that is is such preparing you for the next level um i see i so I, every team has their own way of doing things because their own um level of expectation and i just believe that because we are held to that um pro, we are professionals in every single manner from the way that we speak from the way that we look and we, we perform and carry ourselves i believe that that helps us stand above the rest when it comes to other teams. And I'm not saying other teams are not professional or anything, but just having a person who believes in you and that sees that higher standard in you, that one reason why you're selected is because you are of the higher standard. It's, it's kind of, that's what sets it all aside. And you have somebody who works just as hard as you do with your team and with your routines and everything else that goes on with making sure the team is running. Um, To me, that's, I would think that that's the main difference at the level of professionalism and just the energy. A lot of, a lot of people are attracted to energy. So the energy that, um, that the team brings currently is just an energy that's, um, attractive. People are attracted to the energy that we bring energy that we have, um, our little, of uh, our level of diversity. And I just think that that is what sets teams above the rest in all aspects. It's just my opinion. Well said. I just wanted to take one extra second and talk about our sponsor of the week, Mid-Atlantic Video and Photography Production. No matter if you're planning a wedding and you need a wedding videographer, you're doing a music video, or you're doing a commercial, they are the team to get the job done. You can reach out to them at 443-422-3830. Again, that's 443-422-3830. Or you can go right to their website at mav. PP.com. Now let's get right back to this great interview. So this is the part of the show where I let you talk about or bring up or take over the show. So is there anything going on that is really important that we need to put a spotlight on? Or um, is there any fundraising? Are you raising money for it? for any causes what 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 should the audience know more about you sure um so currently i'm not raising any money right now because i'm not in a pageant as of yet but starting the new year i will be hopefully entering um one to two this year as i did last year awesome um and hopefully praying that i'll go ahead and get the crowns um but i really just for me I really think it's important that everyone, um, we draw attention and awareness to our military families and our veterans. Um, of course, being a part of the military service myself, um, it's very important that we hone, hone in more to our veterans and to our people who are of disability be, due to war or time and service. Um, there are plenty of, this is the holiday season, so there are plenty of organizations who are creating care packages, we're sending care packages to those who are overseas during this holiday season. And I do just want to encourage all 
all of everybody, all families, anyone who may be involved, even current veterans who are here, who did their time and service to just reach out to either an American Red Cross or um, to a USO um, establishment to be able to give back or to donate, or even if it's just donating time to be able to um, provide for our veterans and our service members and our active duty members who are currently serving overseas. So, I mean, I think that's really important that we take care of the people that are taking care of us because if it wasn't for your service and for their service, we wouldn't have the liberties and the rights that we have. So um, I do thank you for your service. You, you didn't bring that up. So where did you uh, squeeze in your service um, between dancing and going to college and high school? And all? So did you take off a couple of years um, after our college to do, to do a couple years of serving? Um, no. So, um, I did my four years of college. I graduated, um, in May of 2016. And then in October of 2016, that same year, I enlisted, um, active duty into the army. And I just happened after my school and my basic training in my school, I just got lucky <laughs> to get placed here in Maryland in Bethesda, at uh, Walter Reed National Military Medical Center, um, where I am currently serving as still, I'm still on active duty for at least another year. Um, and I'm a behavioral health technician. So I work hand in hand with a lot of our veterans, active duty members, spouses, independents um, with mental health. And with that being in this area, I seen there were so many teams, so many opportunities. And I, something in me was just telling me that this has always been my dream and now I just need to go after it and do it. So while I was here, I just, um, my free time outside of going to school as well and obtaining my master's, I snuck in time for dance and then I was just growing better as a dancer and then I tried out and that's how I got on the shuckers. Um, okay, you just like skipped over one of the biggest, the biggest, you're also pursuing your master's too? Yeah, so I, I <laughs> like so okay, you are a super gold star person, okay? Superstar, star, star, star. Okay, okay, you're you're serving our country, which is yeah. something that I, I commend you for doing. Okay. Um mm -hmm. you, you you're you're dancing in your free time, which if you're in the military, you know you don't really have free time. Right. Okay. Have lots so, of it. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're also pursuing your masters. I'm actually pursuing my second master's. I finished my first master's last year. I will no, this year, May of 2019, I finished my master's um, in psychology and communications um, from Liberty University. So now I'm um, still obtaining my second master's. I'm in a program currently um, on a break. Thank the Lord. Um, but I'm on a, a small break from that. And then um, I guess adding on to whatever else I do, I was also doing pageants and training for pageants in my free time. Lat well this past year as well holding two holding two sites um, state titles one with Maryland and one with New Jersey so I was doing a lot of work. <laughs> is lot. that is that something that's instilled to you that you just can't not be doing something? It sounds like do you ever <laughs> sit do you I'm mean, honestly do you ever sit on the couch and just watch television because I don't know how you have time. <laughs> Sometimes, okay, like Sundays, like if, if I get a Sunday, I just love sitting on the couch on Sundays. Okay, um, but that's not but, that's not the norm. The couch no. does the couch doesn't have a spot <laughs> worn in where you sit. Then no, it doesn't. The car does though, because I'm constantly on the go. I just feel like I have so much that I want to do, so much that I still have to achieve. Um, that I can't, I feel like if I slow down now, I'll never get there because eventually I am going to settle down and, you know, I'll have a family and hopefully, you know, build a business and things like that. So it's like, I have to do all of my, all of my attainable goals and dream chase now. And I just, I just feel like this, I don't know. I just, I, I feel like I was just set up to do it. So I just been mm -hmm. going after it the past two and well, a half, where, almost three years. But where's the cheerleading? I mean, the, the pageant stuff roll into that because that that's a new thing for you right just recently in the last couple of years because you never mentioned that that was something that was a major role in your life is that right yeah that is correct so i did one pageant when i was about 
10 years old and I didn't do that well. Um, and I was always discouraged from doing pageants. I was told, you know, really negative things. And I think that some people just try to discourage you from doing things. So I was very discouraged as a young child. The, the, um, it goes back I, to that more, that, uh, positive, more, um, positive influence. So, yeah. So, right. So I didn't have a, a pageant positive influence when I was younger. And then um, when I got into college, actually, I did my university's um, Miss Mrs. Pageant. So I wanted to be Mrs. Show on University or MIS as Miss. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I got first runner up with that. And I was like, That's wow, cool. for me to have never done anything like this before in my life, I am surprised. So that led me to go on to compete for Homecoming Queen. And I actually won this time. So I won Homecoming Queen in college. And I was like, this is amazing. <laughs> Um, so you are so, a super achiever. You want to, if, so if there's a, if there's something that, <laughs> if there's something to check off, you, you, you want to check it off on, on the box. Yeah, for sure. I want to at least try everything. Like when I, for some reason, I feel like when I don't get something that I really, really wanted, of course it's devastating and it hurts and it's painful, but then like something else clicks in me and I'm like, well, there may be something else out there that maybe you can do. Like if you, if you, uh, keep working hard and maybe you'll get it. And I was told, um, high school, there was, I can't remember exactly who told me this, but they, this person told me, they was like, well, you know, um, first, first runner ups are just being prepared and molded to be the Queens. So I always took that. And when I got the first runner up for the Miss pageant at Chowan University, I was like, you know what, that's, this is preparing me to be the queen. So I have to keep going. I have to try again. But you could and say I that for a dance too. You could, I mean, yeah. You know, yeah. So that, I, I mean. The only where the only the only instance that that probably is not really is maybe if you're pursuing the guy, but the girl should never pursue the guy. The guy should pursue the girl. Um, yeah. That that's not necessarily the, a good philosophy. So you should always <laughs> try and come in first. Um, but every, every everything else in life, you know, I I think that's more than a be a good way to think of it. Yeah, for sure. I think. Um even if it's not like, oh, if you're like, if you're not, even if it's not king or queen, but if you're like, oh, that, that second runner up or that first runner up is preparing me to be the next person up or it's preparing me to be the winner. And it's like, eventually it kind of gets you in the mode that eventually you will win. Your time will come. And that just means that you just have to keep pushing and working for it. And that's something that I, I kind of try to keep with me um, just to know like, okay, I'm not making, I'm not making, I'm not making it. Even after trying out for so many teams, not making it. However, I've also made a team each year as well. Rather, even though it may not have been the highest, I still made a team. So it, it's very, it's relevant. Especially when you're in the military, you're pursuing pageantry and a, ma a master's degree. Um, okay. So I, I, I guess I can now say officially that there is no excuse. Time, time is only, time is only excuse if you make time an excuse because clearly you make every effort to make everything available, and clearly it is available. Time schedules, um, available if you make it available. So, yeah, for sure. Um, time management is something that <laughs> if you don't know, you should learn <laughs> because. There's so much you can do with your time if it's used wisely, I would say. So now that you've really earned the rank of being a professional cheerleader, do you have any um, recommendations for someone that is looking up to you and, you know, maybe they have cheered in college, but they are not um, having any success? Do you, do you have any recommendations now that you have three years of, professional experience and hopefully um more to come um yes yeah, so i would definitely say based off of experience um that sometimes it's hard and you get knocked down on your butt but you just got to keep going because someone somewhere is going to believe in you and you have to again back to my original advice you have to believe in yourself every step of the way keep trying keep working hard um, definitely, they always they always tell you take classes, get better at technique, get better at your skills, get better at fitness. 
And I would say yes to all these things. However, I would say take one thing at a time because trying to do everything at one time is going to drive you insane and with trying to learn and trying to get better. So you have to really just get better at one aspect in your life at a time. And sometimes getting a helpful um, service, like I, I did a lot of it on my own, but I did have some help with um, sideline prep. So if, if you want to do a, a sideline prep program, there's plenty of other programs as well. But in this area, sideline prep is really big. Um, however, if you don't have the money, look to someone who is doing what you want to do and ask them for their advice. Um, and I'm always available to anybody who wants to talk to me. Um, you can reach out to me. I'm more so on Instagram more than anything. My at handler is at Desmo two underscores. So that's D E Z M O underscore underscore. Um, and just really just getting, like we were saying before, getting a mentor and just having someone who will push you when you don't want to be pushed and who will praise you when you need to be praised. So that that's my advice. Ladies, I am so impressed by this young lady. I I I, I had the opportunity to see her um, her first year dancing and then had the opportunity to work with her several years later. And she has put her effort into her body and her dance skills, and it's definitely paid off. So if she's willing to put her time that she already puts out completely 100%, she's willing to give you some of that time, I think that you need to make sure you cash in those those uh, opportunities to, to work, to speak to her and, and to get her wisdom because she's a superstar, and I really think that she's going to be – on the Redskins or, or Ravens um, shorter than later. So um, I re- we really appreciate you coming on the show. I hope you, you really had fun talking about your experience. And hopefully um, this time next year, maybe we can do a follow-up with you um, talking about your upcoming year being on the football field. Yes, I sure I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> That's the goal. Yes. Well, we're praying for you, and we are continue to 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 pay attention, and we hope everyone else is is doing the same and wishing you the best luck for auditions this upcoming year. Yes, and thank you so much for um, just allowing me to be on your platform. I think that's such an amazing opportunity to to even have this opportunity to be here. Like I never would have thought a couple of years ago that I would even be on a podcast explaining my story and everything. So I feel. I feel really honored and blessed that you asked me to be here. So thank you so much. Oh, no problem. I, I think that no matter if um, you have a big following or small following, um, to show how much adversity you've come, come by and how hard you work, it will inspire someone else. And if it just has, if you just inspire one person, that one person can inspire another person. And, you know, as they say, karma, if you can, if you do one good thing that hopefully that will help another person, then hopefully that will help another. So, you know, we're just going to, we're trying to spread the good karma on this show. And we, we just hope that everyone um, learns a little bit and continues listening to uh, these wonderful guests like yourself. So. Of course, they better tune in. Yeah, I know. Great. Exactly. <laughs> well, thank you so much for your time. And. Uh, We wish you luck for auditions this upcoming season. Thank you so much. Thank you, Des, for coming on the show. If you listen to this episode and you're not inspired to do every single thing you can to achieve your goals, then you need to listen to this episode again because this young lady is doing four things at once and making time for it. And that is so impressive. Some people can't just finish work alone. Des is pursuing being a, a, a professional dancer, pageantry, and she's pursuing her, her second master's. And she's active military. What a, an absolute inspiring woman. And we just really um, thank her for being, taking the little time that she has out of her day to talk to us about her success. And we only wish her the most 
um, success in the future. And we know she's going to be successful. And we're so thankful to have the opportunity to interview her at the beginning of her journey. Do not forget, this show drops every Thursday. You can subscribe on YouTube and on iTunes. Please give us a comment. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a thumbs down. Tell us what we're doing right or wrong. And always, don't forget to join us. Thank you.